So I became obsessed with this hospital and saving these babies. It was, it was just, it was wonderful. I was truly saving lives and the babies would start going home healthy. And one day I was sitting holding a newborn who had AIDS and I was playing with its fingers and just, you know, it was quiet in the hospital and I was enjoy- enjoying this baby. And all of a sudden I, I thought I heard something like, um, dogs howling. And, you know, I thought, oh, well, it must be some hungry dogs. And I love dogs. So of course I went to find where the crying was coming from. And it sounded like it was coming from the back of the hospital near the morgue. And I opened the, this door and it was really dark inside. It took some time for my eyes to adjust. And there was a very, very dim uh, light coming in from under another door, no windows. And these howls turned out to be, ba- it was all children and they were all disabled children um, of various awesome. ages. Yeah, they were all disabled children. And um, the oldest might have been 14, 15, um, but he, you could see every bone in his body and he, ha- he didn't have any teeth. Um, and then I started looking around and there was one little boy. His name was Henri. Um, I named him Henri later and he's, he's 29 now, but at that time he was about two, we think. And he was jumping up and down in his crib and he was, you know, trying to get my attention. And I looked at what he was playing with. I thought somebody had given him a doll and it was actually a deceased little baby that he was playing with. I went over oh and. God. I took the child and I laid it against the wall, you know, so because I didn't want him playing with it. And uh, I was so, I think I was just in shock because I was trying to figure out, was I supposed to be in here? And why were these people in here, these children and um, older um, people, you know, the, the older kids? And they were naked. One little girl, um, I named her Sandalini, and this little girl was laying in a crib with iron slats with no uh, mattress. And I, she was screaming. I mean, that's where all the howling was coming from. She was screaming in agony and was exhausted from, you know, just ex- her breath was, you know, like this. And every breath, there was a scream. So I thought I'd pick her up and, you know, comfort her. When I picked her up, there was sort of a, a hesitance. And I put her against, I put her against my chest and then realized that my hand hit the back of her head and sunk into the back of her head because the flesh had grown to the metal bars. And when I lifted her, it literally tore off the scalp. And I took that baby and walked to the pediatric section of the hospital. And I said, you got to come with me, come, come with me. And I was, I was was telling the doctors that you got to come with me and see these, these children. And they, they explained, no, 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 those are cocoa bays. We don't take care of cocoa bays. No. I said, I'll pay you. They said, nope, we do not take care of cocoa bays. I didn't know what a cocoa bay was. I assumed that it meant crazy children um, because they were all acting crazy, you know, screaming and, um, naked. And so I just stayed that night. I sent Marcelin out to get a lot of water, um, to get me some diapers, some, any kind of, um, any kind of salve, salve that he could find, um, something with antibiotic in it. And I just held him and I felt horrible about what I did to Sandalini. And um, I, I determined the next day that I would find someone, I would take her into the pediatric unit and make it seem like 
she didn't come from that room, that she was in a Coco Bay, that she was just a new arrival. Because what, what is Coco Bay? It means less than human um, because they were handicapped children. Every one of them had a handicap. So that's, I found out later why they were put in that room, because in the voodoo religion, a uh, deformity is a curse that someone put on you or the mother um, while, while the child was in gestation. So you have to get rid of it. And that's where people get rid of their um, disabled children. Or in some villages, they... Um, I, I have another young man that we've raised um, who was a Coco Bay, and my husband and I found him uh, in the mountains above our, our orphanage. He was tied to a tree, and he was probably six or seven, and he, naked, filthy, covered in mud. I couldn't even tell if it was a boy or a girl at first. He was so emaciated, and his genitals were utterly unrecognizable um we took him down to our orphanage and cleaned him up and we've raised him and uh he is now i think he's 14 now but this is the the practice of euthanization of disabled children is very common in haiti i'm not talking like they inject them with anything or smother them they, it's euthanization by um, withdrawal of nutrition and um, and usually water. So we started realizing that that room that I found, that, that those children had been put there and not fed or given water for who knows how long, um, and they were being euthanized. So I went to the office of the director of the hospital he was actually a a pretty decent man um just had you know his culture was um does this so when i explained to him that these children were locked in this room he knew and he explained again that those children are abandoned, they're cocoa bays, we can't take care of them, we don't have the assets to take care of them, and I asked, could I please take care of them? And um, he said, oh, sure. Didn't take me very seriously. He's like, oh, sure. Well, after several months, those kids were starting to get better. And by... Eight months after I discovered them, there were now 57 children abandoned in that place. So I needed to get, um, he wouldn't let me give them medicine, and he would only let me give them a little water and a little food. But he said, if you're going to feed them, you have to feed all.